Welcome to our CK High and future CK High students and families. Welcome to our registration webinar for the 2021-2022 school year. We are so glad that you are here with us tonight, or if you are watching this as a recording, um, that you are, are taking the time to be with us, members of our CKHS counseling team and our administrative team here at CK High. My name is Miranda Smallwood, and I am an assistant principal at CK High. This is my second year here and very excited to help you plan um, your 21-22 school year. Um, our hosts this evening are our lovely and talented guidance counseling team whom you see before you. We have Miss Elizabeth Martin, Mr. Scott McMines, Miss Nikki Arondo, and Miss Michelle Sotello, and also our host, Kim Dean, who is helping us with our webinar formatting tonight. Our purpose here is that, um, or uh, tonight, or whenever you're watching this, if you're watching it recorded, is to present a deep dive into our registration process, including um, the opportunity for you to have your direct questions answered either tonight or flagged for a follow-up. So some housekeeping items that we wanna make sure you're aware of. Your videos and your microphones um, are not seen or heard by your panelists here tonight and they're not captured within our recording. So we just wanted to assure you of that. Um, speaking of recording, I've mentioned that a couple times. We are recording this session and we will upload the video onto our guidance counseling webpage at ckhigh.cskschools.org. So if you, if, if you miss something as we're presenting, um, or if you know that there is a, you know, a fellow student or family who needs this information, um, please make sure that you pass along, spread the word that we will post this recording for them or for you to rewind, um, pause, watch again and again. We'll also post with that uh, video recording, this video recording, we will post a FAQ document um, that will derive from the questions you, you asked tonight, as well as just questions we know are, are commonly asked through the registration process. Our concrete objectives tonight include just a really broad overview of uh, graduation requirements is number one. Number two, details on how to register for classes for next school year. And then third, academic opportunities for students at CKHS. So again, welcome, very glad you are here. We um, have over a hundred folks with us tonight. So welcome everyone. And with that, I'm gonna pass it on to Mr. Scott McMines for our first topic. Thank you. Thank you, Miranda. It's uh, wonderful to be here tonight with you guys. Um, all the counselors where you were introduced by Ms. Smallwood, uh, I'd like to introduce a couple more. We have a wonderful counseling department, a, a great team, and I'm so proud to be part of it. Uh, Ms. Rebecca Doherty is joining us this year as a substitute for Mr. Miles, and she's working primarily with our Running Start students or prospective Running Start students, and that's her right there with her dog. Uh, Mr. Hunt is our Career Center Coordinator, uh, and he works with students in their high school and beyond plan and, and does lots of other fun things with, with students. Uh, Ms. Roy is our Registrar, and she does so many wonderful things with uh, grades and transcripts and all that good stuff. Ms. Mose is our Counseling uh, uh, tech, and she does a lot of things, especially with students that are moving towards their senior year, uh, does a lot with scholarships and college applications. And Ms. Snyder is our counseling uh, secretary, and without her, our office probably wouldn't run efficiently. She does just so many wonderful things for us. So that's our counseling department. What do we do in the counseling center? Where our, our goal is to support students. And really we're looking at academics, uh, career, social, emotional. And we do our very best to reach all students and we meet them where they are. We come alongside and we try and uh, be with them throughout their high school career. Uh, we do that through individual appointments. 
Sometimes we have staffings and collaborate with families and teachers. We've been doing that with Zoom and Google Meets. Um, and, and we do a lot of things that, uh, as you can see there, and we will reach out by sending out credit checks, um, newsletters, and other things that we will be able to communicate out uh, in lots of different ways. So that's who we are and what we do. And now I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Arondo. Thanks, Mr. McMines. Um, one thing Mr. McMines is going to do for us this evening is he's going to monitor the Q&A feature. So on your features this evening, as Ms. Smallwood mentioned, um, there's your, an ability for you to ask questions in uh, the Q&A section. So you can type in your questions and Mr. McMines is gonna do his best to answer it with our help, of course, because the counseling team, we support each other and help each other out. And then um, we'll take those Q&As and we'll actually post them along with this recording for other folks that might want to see the questions that were asked and maybe those answers can be helpful to other people. We want CK high school students and their families to be sure to know all four components of earning a high school diploma from Central Kids Up High School. The goal between now and your senior year, June of your graduating year, um, you are going to fulfill the 24 credit graduation requirement, high school and beyond, uh, a state assessment, uh, we now call that a state testing and or a state pathway assessment, and then Washington State History. Most students fulfilled Washington State History when they were in middle school. If you have any questions about these um, four components of the diploma, that's what we're here for. All right, so this slide features the 24 credits and how those credits break down. Um, if we start with the subject area English, you can see that English has four credit requirements, meaning most students take English all four years of their time at Seek High School. Math has a three credit requirement. Now, please remember that this slide features the diploma requirements. Um, one thing that we're going to encourage you is as you're registering for your classes to be thinking not only about your diploma requirements, we want you to be thinking about your post high school plans. So a lot of our students continue education after high school. So they'll take math in their senior year um, to prepare for that next level of learning that happens after high school. Science, three credits. And again, this is a diploma requirement and lots of students take four credits of science. And then social studies has a three credit requirement. In the social studies section, you can see the breakdown of those credit values. And then there's also additional information in the course catalog on all these sections. PE and health has two credits, career and technical education. Career and technical education, um, those courses are often uh, referred to as vocational and they are kind of like job type classes. That's one credit. Uh, fine arts and world language, each of those have two, but you'll notice that in parentheses, it talks about uh, a credit in art can be substituted for a PPR. PPR stands for personal pathway requirement. So depending on what a student's going to do after high school, they are allowed to use one of those two art credits to take courses in classes that are more associated with what they'd like to do after high school. Same goes with world language. So for students that are gonna pursue higher ed, um, they'll want to take a world language because that's part of the requirement to continue on at a four-year college or university. If a student has a different pathway, then they can use those two credits for other classes at CK High School. Ms. Martin is gonna talk to you a little bit more about uh, specific videos that you can watch, and um, that'll be referenced in just a second to get more thorough explanation about the PPR and graduation requirements. And then you can see that as we're going along here, the electives has four credits, and then all of those add up to 24 credits. And many, many students are able to meet their 24 credit graduation requirement. All right, Ms. Martin, on to you. Thank you, Mr. Rondo. Um, I'm Lizzie Martin, one of the counselors here at CK High. 
And my portion of the presentation tonight will kind of be showing you around the CK High webpage, specifically the guidance counseling portion, um, where parents can access all of the registration materials. Um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the course catalog. Um, so this orange slide that you see a screenshot of on this page, um, this is kind of what we're referring to as home base for registration and your student should have received this in advisory today. Um, this has five videos that we will reference a lot tonight and we'll probably reference a lot with your student. Um, we tried to make these videos so that they kind of walk through the registration process um, and hopefully give you a lot of information and answer a lot of questions. So I'm going to show you where you can access these videos as well as some additional registration info. So we'll head over to the CK High webpage. And from here, we're going to go to guidance, guidance counseling, and then registration. So you'll see all of the graduating years available here. So you're gonna select your child's graduating year. We'll get juniors here for a moment. So you'll see all of the registration materials listed here. Um, the course catalog, the registration worksheet, which your um, student should have received a hard copy of in the mail, registration instructions, as well as a ton of other information for students interested in running START in C2A um, and other applications for journalism, for working for yearbook. So lots of information here. Um, the slide that I showed you um, before, the orange slide I was referencing, is going to be under start here. So again, this is kind of like our home base for registration. So this is where you're going to be getting a lot of information. Um, and you can see a lot of active students up at the top looking over these videos. Um, so slide two here is going to list all of the videos that we made to walk you through the registration process. And again, hopefully answer a lot of those questions. I'm gonna say a quick word about the course catalog, which is also available on the CK Hair website. Um, so the course catalog, we really put a lot of work into this, um, or I should say our counseling secretary puts a ton of work into this, but this really highlights a lot of classes and a ton of information. So we really would like this to be a part of what um, you're looking over before you're entering your course selections onto PowerSchool. In the course catalog, um, you're going, one of the first pages in there is academic guidelines. Um, and these are kind of the rules of the road in terms of your time at CK and making your way toward graduation. So three that we want to highlight is um, students must meet all of the graduation requirements that Mr. Rondo talked about at the beginning of the presentation in order to participate in graduation activities and commencement. Um, courses in the catalog may not be offered due to a variety of circumstances. So um, staffing issues, uh, scheduling availability, low enrollment in classes, that can all impact whether or not a class is offered. Um, and so we want students to be aware of that and also really thoughtful about their alternates. If their first choice class ends up not being offered or not working in their schedule, then we want them to choose an alternate that they would be happy taking. Um, and so that's, it's super important when they're inputting classes into PowerSchool that they are being thoughtful about alternates as well, as well as their first choice. Um, I'm gonna go back one slide. <laughs> one thing I forgot to mention on the, um, kind of home base like I was talking about is uh, one of the videos that will detail how to input your classes into PowerSchool. So the registration worksheet that we sent home is really a tool for your student to use to give them an idea of what they wanna take and what's offered. So this is kind of a worksheet that they're working through. They're inputting their classes onto this in a hard copy, and then they need to transcribe all that into PowerSchool. This does not need to be turned into us. It's yours to keep or throw away after 
the classes get inputted into PowerSchool. So video number five, um, Ms. Roy walks you through how to input those classes into PowerSchool. So that is a critical last step um, is to input those so that we know what you want to take. So this worksheet is not something that we need. It's just kind of a tool for you to work through what classes your student is hoping to take. Um, a couple other points about the course catalog. We want students to be looking over the prerequisites for classes. So a prerequisite is a class you need to take before the subsequent class. So in this case, medical interventions, we want you to be aware of what classes you need to take before you can be successful in medical interventions. Um, also be looking at what grade level is served in particular classes. And also this orange college credit box. I've already had several students reach out to me um, and interested in what college credit is available in high school. And we call those dual credit programs. So opportunities for students to be um, taking college classes as well as earning high school credit. And so talk a little bit more about that. I'm going to pass it over to Ms. Sotelo. You're muted, Michelle. Thank you so much, Ms. Martin. It was a perfect handoff, except I forgot to unmute. Um, the portion of my presentation is about dual credit opportunities in Central Kitsap High School. And on the website, you will find this slide that says dual credit in CKSD. And Ms. Martin did a great job of pointing out those orange slides. It is available as part of those orange slides on the third um, slide. Um, with resources for um, accessing these short video clips. So a couple of options, and I saw them in the chat already. Some students were asking questions about West Sound Technical Skills Center. This is a program available to juniors and seniors, and West Sound Technical Skills Center is in Bremerton off of National Avenue, and the students would attend for three periods of the day. They offer a variety of different vocational and technical programs, such as cosmetology, automotive, welding, professional medical careers, fire science, so a lot of different great options. And you will find a short video available on this slide um, that will talk to you more specifically about what the program offerings are and the application process. For more information, you would want to contact Mrs. Brown in the Career Center and her email address is listed here for you. For students who are interested in the Running Start program, again, you'll see a short video available for you to watch to learn some more about our Running Start program. This is for students in their junior or senior year with the 2.5 cumulative GPA or higher who place into college English and math. So English 101 or higher and, and a math 107 or 141 or higher. Um, would allow for them to access up to 15 credits at Olympic College per term. So for students interested in the Running Start program, Mr. McMines introduced Mrs. Doherty, our Running Start counselor. She would be the person that you would want to um, email and let know that you are either interested in the Running Start program or you, if you are for sure going to participate, she would be um, the person that's going to help you out with that registration process there. A couple other dual credit options would be our CTE dual credit. This allows for students in high school to earn college credit by earning a B or better in high school courses that are articulated through Olympic College. And there's a lot of information in our course catalog about the CTE dual credit options. Other programs and ways for students to earn college credit in high school would be through our advanced placement program. AP is run through College Board, the same overseeing entity that um, administers the SAT, PSAT, um, those types of tests. And they um, have a ton of information on their website, on the College Board website. We offer 29 different AP courses at Central Kitsap High School. 
and students um, at most universities would, if they earned a three or better on their AP exam, would earn AP credit um, at a university. Um, there are, again, articulation agreements. So check carefully to make sure um, whether or not the classes that you're taking would be acceptable at the universities that you're planning on applying to. Another way for you to earn credit for um, college while you're in high school is through our College in the High School program. This is um, available at CK High through the University of Washington for some of our English courses that you'll see listed in the catalog. And you will see information um, uh, for Central Washington University for some of our other College in the High School courses as well. So if you are interested in those, um, again, we're happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, but as you can see, there are a ton of ways for students to challenge themselves academically at CK High. The next slide is about our honors programs at CK High. Again, the outstanding work that our students do, we love to honor in a variety of different ways. And on this slide, you'll see a whole bunch of different accolades that students can receive upon graduation. Um, we have an honors program brochure linked on each of the um, cohort websites. So you'll be able to access the ins and outs of each program. I'll briefly go over our distinguished scholar program. In a student's senior year, we have three mandatory meetings if students are planning on becoming a distinguished scholar. In order to be considered, you must have a 3.4 cumulative GPA or higher, no more than four Cs, no grade lower than a C, and 18 semester hours of honors or advanced coursework. And those courses that qualify for the Distinguished Scholar Program are listed in the brochure that you see on this slide. So again, we encourage students to challenge themselves, um, but also not overwhelm yourself with um, too much because you want to have that happy balance. Think about, are you going to be playing sports? Are you going to be involved in extracurricular activities and clubs? Um, we want to make sure that um, you are able to manage the time that it is required when you are challenging yourself with those honors advanced courses. Um, high school is challenging, and so we want to uh, make sure that you are making informed decisions about the courses that you choose. The next slide is about NCAA eligibility. If you are planning on playing sports at a D1 or D2 school, you'll want to make sure that you are following the information on this slide. I won't go into detail on this because um, the, the, there's other information that you would probably want to talk to your counselor specifically about, but please make sure that you schedule an appointment to meet with us. Usually in your junior or senior year is when we would be having those conversations about NCAA eligibility, but we want you to be aware of it as we are uh, working through the um, registration process for your classes for next year. The next slide talks about the minimum college academic distribution requirements. And I saw a question in the chat about this. So thank you to that person who asked that question. Uh, many of our students, as they are going through high school, are thinking about post-secondary educational opportunities at four-year baccalaureates. The minimum college academic distribution requirements that we fondly refer to as the CATERS are set by the Washington Student Achievement Council. And you will see on this slide the general requirements for Washington Public Baccalaureates. So if you're applying to a private university, they may be slightly different, but this is definitely a good rule of thumb to follow. And we would definitely encourage you to take a look at college websites to find what those differences may be, if any. You'll see that these are not too terribly different from our graduation requirements, but there are some subtle differences that you definitely want to pay attention to. English is still four credits, math is still three credits, but you'll see that there's that notation about a senior year quantitative math course that is required. The intent of this is to require students to take a meaningful math in their senior year. If you've completed beyond algebra two by your senior year, then you've met this requirement. Uh, for example, if you're taking pre-calc in 11th grade, then you've met that requirement. Um, so the next category that you'll see is the science category, still three credits, 
one credit needs to be in algebra-based science. Those are notated in our catalog. Um, and again, you'll want to pay attention to each college's website because an example would be Western Washington University. They require that of those science credits, one year be an algebra-based chemistry or physics course. So they're very specific in which science is required. Um, and they also require a year of a lab science. So check out websites, check and make sure that they are matching up with your hopes, goals, and dreams. Social studies is still three credits. For fine art, we require two credits. The caters state that you need one credit. And the world language, we have two years of a world language as well. This one is specific that the world language must be the same. So if you take a Spanish one in your freshman year and a Japanese one in your sophomore year, then that would not meet the requirement. It needs to be of the same language. So I know I covered a lot of information there. Hopefully that spurred some good questions. And if we need to answer some of those live, we can take some time to do that. I just want to summarize some next steps. Um, now that you have hopefully viewed the registration videos, um, you want to make sure that you are completing all of these steps. Uh, the registration materials, as we mentioned, were mailed to you. If you did not receive them, they're available on the website for you to print out and still be able to read over that cover letter. There was a ton of information in there, so please make sure you read that carefully. The second step would be to watch all those registration videos that we have uh, talked about so frequently. And the third step would, to be, would be to make sure that you review the course catalog, especially the prerequisites for courses. And then if you are currently a ninth, 10th or 11th grader, your grad plan progress is available through PowerSchool for you to be able to view. Use that, it's a very helpful tool. Um, there may be some things on there that you might have some questions about. Feel free to reach out to your counselor um, and we can help with that. But more than anything, hopefully tonight has given you some more food for thought of other things that you may want to consider. So um, take those into consideration as you are signing up for your classes. That's what do your research means. Think about the honors programs. Think about ways in which that you could potentially earn uh, credit for um, college while you're in high school, if that's something that's an aspiration for you. Um, NCAA eligibility, and of course the cater requirements. The fourth thing would be to complete your course worksheet, make sure it totals 6.0 with alternates. I do wanna clarify, because I saw a great question in the chat about courses that are listed in the catalog as counting as 1.0, but on the course selection sheet, they're identified as a 0.5. So we want to be clear, the course selection sheet is only designating if it is a semester long or a year long course. That's the difference. So uh, in the course catalog, we are referring to the credit value associated with the class. So on your registration, we need to make sure that you have six classes, first and second semester for a full schedule your credit value may be slightly different depending on if, for example, you're doing CTE dual credit courses or college in the high school courses. The last step, uh, sorry, and make sure that you have alternates for those course selections as well. You will not be able to complete the registration process unless there are alternates selected. Um, the last piece is to make sure once you have your course selection sheet finished, that you are inputting your course selections into PowerSchool by March 19th. If you do not get your course selections entered into PowerSchool by that date, you can reach out to your counselor, most likely we'll be reaching out to you if you have not completed the registration process to um, enter your course selections for you. We can do that, you will not be able to do that after March 19th. Um, I've seen some great questions in the chat as well about um, students with IEPs and case managers will be working with counselors and administration to make sure that we have students with an individualized education plan um, scheduled correctly. So um, your case manager should be in touch with you about those recommendations for what courses you would need based on your IEP. 
Um, with that, I'm gonna stop chatting and ask if my colleagues have anything that they can think of that I might have missed or we want to include. I was going to jump in because I accidentally hit the answer live button again this evening. <laughs> so there was a question in the chat and I believe Ms. Sotelo just covered it. And there was a question about if a student is planning on doing Running Start, that do they need to register? And so like Ms. Sotelo said, we're asking all students to register as if they're going to be students at CK High School. So we want you um, if you're going to become do West Sound Tech as part of your option for the following school year or running start, we want you to submit a full registration schedule. And then upon enrollment and getting admitted and finishing other steps to running start, then you and Miss Doherty will work on your schedule to back you out of your classes at CK High School. Um, that was that. So for the person I said I'd answer live, there you go. Thank you, Mr. Rondo. Yeah, in, you in addition to that, um, just make sure that you have the 6.0 in there and we will adjust your course selections once we know that you've been accepted either to West Sound or into the Running Start program. I'll go ahead and answer the question about um, registering by March 19th. If we won't know about transfer requests until after spring break. So students who have um, put in their choice transfer paperwork and they are waiting to hear back, you may not hear until after that March 19th date and that's totally fine. Once um, that has been completed and once we know that you've been accepted to come to CK, we will get your course selection sheet from you. And if you'd like to send that to us, we can keep it in a file and then add those course selections once that student has moved into our data. I have noticed also in the chat that there's been some um, pretty specific questions about different courses and in the event we're not able to answer your question this evening, um, we would really promote, like Ms. Martin said, take a look at the course catalog because the course catalog is going to give you a lot of information about where do the classes count for credit, what's the description of the class. And then the other thing is if you have a question about a class such as a science class, it's really helpful for you to talk to your current teachers. So if you're wondering about a science course, go ahead and talk to your science teacher about that um, so that they can give you input and feedback based on specific science classes. I'll answer the question in the um, Q&A. We observed that the recommended science course for 11th grade indicated an alternate choice should be selected. Why is that? So the reason that we ask for students to put alternate courses is because there are many different situations that will arise between now and the start of next school year. We may not have enough teaching personnel to offer the course. We may not have the classroom capacity. We may not have room physically to offer the course. Um, we may not have enough students sign up for that course. There's a lot of different reasons. So we just um, are hoping to find out what a second choice backup would be uh, acceptable for a student so that that gives us a little bit more flexibility. We will do everything that we can to try to get first choice selections, but if a choice, but if a course is canceled, or another situation would be if there's only one section of that course and it is in conflict with another class that there's only one section, then we would obviously need a backup for one of those. Another question about um, transfer students registering um, and maybe losing priority 
in classes. So um, as soon as your transfer request gets approved, we'll work to get your classes inputted as soon as we can. And we really build the master schedule from the ground up based on what kids request. So um, you're not, the classes aren't gonna be filling up yet because we're still, we will build it based on what students are requesting. So I know I've had some families reach out to me with that concern as well, but do not worry. We will have space. Way to go. And yes, classes already. That's awesome. Yeah. It's wonderful. All right, we are happy to stay on. If you have any other questions, just continue to drop those into the chat. Um, I'm sorry, into the Q&A. Um, again, this uh, presentation is being recorded and will be posted. So if you need to go back to reference and there will be a link to the, all the Q&A questions as well if you need to go back and reference that. Thank you everyone for attending tonight. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we are excited, um, hopefully, to see you all in person in our building as soon as possible. Thank you.